Welcome to the Quiz Master. This is final coaching number 26, live online review class, let secondary English major. I am your lecturer, let lecturer, Professor Paul Iranio, a faculty member of the University of San Agustin here in Iloilo City. So let's start. Yes, the quiz master posts free review materials. However, if you want to support our channel, consider sending us super thanks, which you can purchase on YouTube. Be a member of this channel to have access to our private quizzes. Just click the link in the description section of this video. So let's start. Question number one. The present progressive tense is also called blank. A, the simple present tense. B, the present perfect tense. C, the present continuous tense. D, all of these. E, none of these. So I will give you time to write your answer in the chat box. Yes, Rodami, what's your answer? Yes, your answer is letter C. The present continuous tense. How about you, Carlito? What is your answer? Also letter C. Leo also answered letter C. And that is the correct answer. The present continuous tense. The present progressive tense is also called the present continuous tense. So what is the form here? The form here is I am doing something. Saan ito ginagamit? And? Yes, for things that are happening right now. Okay? For things that are happening right now. Like, in our case, we are studying. That is the I am doing form. Present continuous tense or present progressive tense. When we say we are studying, it means we have started studying, we are still studying, and we haven't finished studying yet. So we are studying. So bucket my present progressive tense and my present continuous tense. Yes? And why do we have this term present progressive tense? And another term, present continuous tense. Yes, Anne? Please type your answer in the chat box. Okay, yes. Sa American English, anong term ang ginagamit? Yes, present progressive. How about in British English? Jennifer? Yes, present continuous. Okay, now let's go to question number two. The prefix blank means self-awareness. A, intra, B, meta, C, extra, D, ultra. What is the correct answer? I will give you time to write your answer in the chat box. Okay, let me check some of your answers. Aaron said meta. Grace answered meta as well. Jennifer, 
meta. Okay, the correct answer is letter B, meta. The prefix meta means self-awareness, meta. So we have these terms, metaphysical, no? metacognition, metalinguistic awareness. Okay, from the options, okay? Um, how about on the other side, beyond the limit? Grace, choose from the options given there. We have intra, meta, extra, and ultra. On the other side or beyond the limit? Yes, that's ultra, correct. How about beyond or outside? Jennifer, beyond or outside? Yes, the, that is extra. No? Extra means beyond or outside. Anton, how about within? Yes, within is intra. Now, let's go to question number three. All of the following are oxymorons except one. Which is it? A, cruel kindness. B, a wise fool. C, unrequited love. D, pleasing pain. I will give you time to write your answer in the chat box. Okay, um, Jennifer answered pleasing pain. Hmm? Well, let's see. Um, James answered unrequited love. Anton, let me check your answer. An Anton answered unrequited love, and that is the correct answer. Unrequited love. Again, all of the following are oxymorons, except one, which is it? The correct answer is letter C. Unrequited love. Let's talk about oxymorons. In oxymoron, how many win? Yes, Anton. At least two, correct. Okay, are the two words similar in meaning? Bernard? Are the two words or are the words in an oxymoron similar in meaning? No, yes. In fact, the words have opposite meanings, right? The words have contradicting meanings. Two contradicting words in a phrase. So we have cruel and kindness. That's option A. It is an oxymoron. Option B is also an oxymoron. Wise, a wise fool. The word wise and the word fool have contradicting meanings. Meanings. Wise is positive and fool is negative. Pleasing pain as well, right? These are oxymorons. By the way, what do you mean by unrequited love? Ronami, what do you mean by unrequited love? Yes, unreturned love, right? Now let's go to question number four. Who proposed the innateness hypothesis? A. Stephen Krashen. B. Robert Lado. C. Dalheims. And letter D. Noam Chomsky. What is the correct answer? Can you write your answer in the chat box? Who proposed the innateness Hypothesis. A. Stephen Krashen. B. Robert Lado. C. Dalheims. D. Noam Chomsky. Okay, Bernard, what is your answer? Bernard said Dalheims. No? How about Anton? Anton also answered Dalheims. No. Yes. James, what is your answer? Noam Chomsky, and that is the correct answer. Who proposed the Ennetness hypothesis? Noam Chomsky. When you say Ennet, when you say Ennet, it means inside, right? 
it's already there. And it nest hypothesis at birth, we already possess language knowledge. It's already there, right? Kailangan lang i-develop, kailangan lang i-enhance, okay? According to Chomsky, we all have the innate capacity to learn a language, right? Innateness hypothesis. Now, let's go to question number five. He was the greatest of all Greek warriors. A, Achilles. B, Odysseus. C, Agamemnon. D, Hector. Again, he was the greatest of all the Greek warriors. A, Achilles. B, Odysseus. C, Agamemnon. D, Hector. I will give you time to write your answer. And please write your answer in the chat box. Okay, Cardito, what is your answer? Achilles? Leo answered Achilles as well. But Anne answered Odysseus. Let's check. The correct answer is letter A, Achilles. He was the greatest of all the Greek warriors, Achilles. In fact, si Achilles ang center ng Iliad ni Homer, right? Achilles played a central role in Homer's Iliad. And by the way, Achilles is known for his extreme emotions. What particular emotions? Dalawang emotions. Okay? Um, Aaron? Yes, correct. Rage or wrath, right? Or anger. Achilles is known or was known for his rage. For his anger, mainite ng ulo, right? And second emotion, Jennifer? Yes, pride. Okay? So, Achilles is known for his extreme emotions, especially the emotions of anger and pride. Now, let's go to question number six. In literature, the term genre means A, analysis, B, origin, C, meaning, D, classification. Again, in literature, the term genre means A, analysis, B, origin, C, meaning, D, classification. What is the correct answer? I will give you time to do that. Please write your answer in the chat box. Okay, Anne's answer is meaning. Aaron's answer is classification. The answer of grace is meaning. Okay, the correct answer is letter D, classification. Okay? In literature, the term genre means classification. Okay? Genre, how literature is classified. Prose or poetry? Fiction or non-fiction? So, my question is, what is the basis or what are the basis of classification? Paano natin kinaklasify ang literature, right? Ang panitikan. Okay? Can you give, can you give me one of the basis? Um, James? Just try. Write your answer in the chat box. Okay, form. Correct. We classify literature based on form. Okay, another class, another basis of classification. Anton, please type your answer in the chat box. Yes, correct. Style. Okay, so form, style, and what's the other one? Bernard. Hmm. 
place of origin, not quite. It's actually topic or subject matter. So we classify literature based on form, style, and topic or subject matter. The word genre comes from what language? Ronomy? Correct, French. And it means what? Carlito? Correct. It means kind or sort of. Genre comes from the French language and it means kind or sort of. Now let's go to question number seven. Open the door, blank, A, don't you, B, can you, C, will you, D, do you. Again, open the door, A, don't you, B, can you, C, will you, D, do you. What is the correct answer? Please write your answer in the chat box. Okay, Bernard's answer is, will you? Anton's answer is also, let me check, will you? Yes. James' answer? Yes. Okay. The correct answer is letter C, will you? Right? Open the door. Will you? Anong structure ang involved dito? Correct. Tag questions. The basic rule in tag questions is a positive statement gets a negative tag question and a negative yeah a positive statement gets a negative tag tag question positive negative and a negative statement gets a positive tag question right question james is our tag questions really questions Please, just type your answer in the chat box. Are tag questions really questions? No, correct. It wants, it only wants affirmation, right? Agreement or attention. It's raining, isn't it? It's not raining, is it? It's not really a question. It only wants affirmation or agreement or attention. Okay, from the other party. Again, the, the basic rule is positive, negative. A positive statement gets a negative tag question. Negative, positive. A negative statement gets an, a positive tag question. And we also have irregular. How about here? The structure here. Open the door, will you? It does not follow the usual rule. The positive, negative, the negative, positive rule. Because this is an irregular Tag question. Open the door. When you say open the door, you are asking someone to do something, right? It is an imperative statement, right? An, an imperative sentence. No? It gives command, right? Basta po imperative or command, yung tag question is always will you, right? If you are asking somebody to do things for you, Always the tag question is, will you? Okay? Wake up, will you? Come here, will you? Close the door, will you? Okay? Um, st study hard, will you? Okay? Question number eight. Biography is A, fiction. B, non-fiction. C, both A and B. D, neither A nor B. What is the correct answer? Can you write your answer in the chat box?
Okay, James' answer is non-fiction. Jennifer's answer is non-fiction as well. How about the grace? What is your answer? Non-fiction. And that is the correct answer. Biography is letter B, non-fiction. Aaron, what is a biography? Okay, please type your answer in the chat box. What is a biography? Let me let me check your answer. Yes, it is it is um a life story of a person, right? Written by another person. Because if it is written by the same person, we call it autobiography, right? The life story of a person written by another. Question and does it involve facts? Yes. Therefore, it is non-fiction because it involves facts. Pag imaginary, fiction. Pag facts, non-fiction. That's very basic. Now let's go to question number nine. Which of the following contractions is incorrect? A, I mightn't. B, I must have. C, I oughtn't. D, I hadn't. What is the correct answer? Kindly write your answer in the chat box. I will give you time to do that. This is question number nine. Okay, first, Ronami, what is a contraction? Okay, kindly write your answer in the chat box. Just type it. Okay, what is a contraction? Okay, I will wait for you. I will wait for your answer. Okay, correct. You join two words together. So, so we say, I don't, right? The, the long form is I do not, right? I want, I will not. So you have two words here and you join them together. That is a contraction. Question, Carlito. Do you use contractions in formal English? You don't, yes. Because contractions make your language informal, right? So when your teacher asks you to write an essay on a certain topic, do not use contractions, okay? Spell the words out, right? Now, the correct answer here is must have, okay? That is, and that is the correct answer, letter B. Why? Because the, the question here says, which of the following contractions is incorrect, not correct? Letter B is not correct because of the wrong placement of the apostrophe. The apostrophe should be placed between T and V, not between V and E. So that is the correct answer. Option C is the, the long form of option D is I had had, right? Option A is I might not, so I mightn't. Option B is I must have, I must have. Option C is I ought not, I oughtn't. And option D is I had had, right? Past perfect tense, so I hadn't. Again, the issue here is wrong placement of the apostrophe. Now let's go to question number 10. Who developed the seven literary standards? A, Harold Bloom. B, T.S. Eliot. C, Graham Greene. D, William J. Long. What is the correct answer? Please type your answer in the chat box. Who developed the seven literary standards? A, Harold Bloom. B, T.S. Eliot. C, Graham Greene or Graham Greene. D. William J. Long. I will give you time to write your answer 
in the chat box. Okay, Carlito, what is your answer? T.S. Eliot? No. How about you, Leo? What is your answer? Oh. Uh, Leo answered T.S. Eliot as well. The correct answer is letter D. William J. Long. Who developed the seven literary standards? William J. Long. Who is familiar with William J. Law? Do you know any anything about him? None? Okay. Um, he was an American writer, right? He was an American writer and he developed these seven literary standards. And what are they? I will give the seven standards, literary standards developed by Long. We have artistry. That's number one. Number two is suggestiveness. Number three is intellectual value. Number four is spiritual value. Number five is permanence. Number six is universality. And number seven is style. Again, artistry. Okay, if, uh, if you have your pen and paper with you, kindly, uh, kindly take note of this. We have artistry suggestiveness, intellectual value, spiritual value, permanence, and universality and style, okay? So these are the seven literary standards developed by William J. Long. So what are these literary standards? What question, what question do they answer? Okay, um, literature in its broadest sense means anything written. Basta nakasulat, it's literature. That's why we have this, we have, you know, medical literature. We have legal literature, right? We have business literature. Kasi, ang broad meaning ng literature is anything written. But if you have to be strict about it, okay, literature is something that should possess uh, anything rather uh, 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 literature in its strictest sense okay means anything written that possesses these uh, literary standards developed by long a literature or a literary work should have artistry right a literary work should have Suggestiveness should have intellectual value, should have spiritual value, should have permanence, should have universality, and should have style. Okay? Literature is stylized, they say. In other words, it answers, so these literary standards answer, answer rather, what the question, what makes literature, literature. Again, it answers the question, what makes literature, literature? Okay? So that's it. Your score? Uh, it's 10 over 10. Um, passing is 5. Yes. So how did you fare in this review quiz? Tell us your score in the comment section and share this quiz to others as well okay thank you for joining us today and see you in the next session good day everyone